So, episode number two, and I have with me Mr. Stephen Carr, also known as Big Steve. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. good. I'm feeling good today. Yeah, feeling good today. Good. Very stuff. positive day. So we we've we've known each other quite a long time, haven't we? Yeah, I've pretty much put up with your shit for over ten years now. So yeah, <laughs> been putting up with this crap for, for yeah. how long now? Uh, By he, God, he's um, like easily yeah, fourteen years. Yeah, I mean, like we we met through um, through music, didn't we? So we yeah. we got introduced to each other through our bands, and obviously we both live in Wolverhampton. Skinny jeans, skinny jeans, mosh pits, tight t shirts, mosh pits, circle head banging, all the good stuff, you know. Makeup. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's one of those kind of friendships where you know it's not one of those fake friendships when no. you have a friend. We've been it. through the phases. We've been through the phases. <laughs> and now we're here today as fully grown adults. We well, survived. I wouldn't go as far as saying I'm, <laughs> I'm fully grown. I don't know if I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, 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 you're currently uh, actually living with me, which has been yeah, quite man. interesting. It's been quite it's, fun. It's, it's been it's been actually really good. It's been a, a little bit of bro good. time together. and uh, Good company. One, one really good thing is that you're learning a lot about eating cleaner and, and meal prepping. Mm. And, you know, you've been digging some of these meals that I've been showing <laughs> you. I mean, I cooked you this, the katsu curry the other day. How, yeah. was, how was that for you? That was, buzz- that was really good. It was better than when I cooked it anyway. Because, um, yeah, I can't cook, mate. I don't. Well, you're getting there. You tried the katsu curry. And, I mean, I remember the first time when I did, when I did the katsu for you. And you, the look on your face when you took that first bite was just like, oh, my God. Well, mate, if I was a woman, I'd have done, I'd have done uh, unmentionable things <laughs> <laughs> for that recipe, mate. But, Which I didn't do. <laughs> just for everybody, just, just to clear things up. Some living here doesn't mean I'm a... Yeah, <laughs> yeah next. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's really cool. It's actually really, really cool kind of um, showing you how to meal prep, showing you like the just the simple things you can do to to take your foods with you through the day and to just show you some simple ways of, of, of cooking healthy yeah. and eating better. And it's not that... It's not actually that complex when you look at it. Right. It's just knowing what yeah, is the right thing. It, you get confused a lot by people throwing stuff in your face that healthy is hard it's easy to eat unhealthy so then when you do go to it you like a you like rabbit in headlights you don't know what you're doing you look at everything it's just it's cryptic when really if you strip it down it's quite it's quite basic you bring it down to brass it's good mm. but it's like you're raising a child isn't it it is a little bit yeah thanks it's, dad it's, <laughs> <laughs> thanks dad, thanks, dad. <laughs> But yeah, um, I can already see that, like, you know, you're seeing the benefits from it. And, you know, just I think sometimes you just need that spark there just to say, do you know what? Yeah, I can actually cook. And I can, if I use a little bit of my creativity, because there's no right or wrong way to cook. People say, oh, you have to have this. You have to have that. It has to be done this way. And I know you was playing around with some of the seasonings and you were saying, you know, if you want a little bit more of the garlic, you can have a little bit more of the garlic. And everyone's got a different. It's not going to take too much away. It's not going to put too much on. It's not like you're messing with the actual yeah, the, the macros and the, the yeah. carbs and that, the meals. It's just adding flavor. Whereas absolutely. normally some people look at thinking, I can't do that. I can't put too much of this in. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, it, it shocked me more about the time it takes. So you had, yeah, yeah. Okay, you had, on, you had me doing it for like thirty minutes for my potatoes. Yeah. Whereas you come in and do a whole meal in twenty minutes. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is new. Yeah. It's 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 like it's learning. It's, it's you're learning as you go along. But yeah. just like anything else, if anything comes confidence and then comes practice, and you just get better at it. And before you know it, you can cook like three or four meals at once. And I'll oh, f- let's not go that far yet. <laughs> not yet. Give me a couple Ooh. more years. <laughs> years. <laughs> years. <laughs> What? God. <laughs> no, donuts. I'm joking. So, donuts. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, you're right in the deep end now with your health and fitness journey. Mm. You're in the gym a lot. You've really packed on a lot of muscle. Um, tell me a little bit more about that and tell me more, like, kind of what, what made you get into the gym and wanting to choose to want to go to the gym and start looking after your body a little bit more. Well, I think it was just a confidence issue, to be honest. You look at yourself for a certain amount of years and you look exactly the same. I've always had skinny legs, broad shoulders, but I've looked like an absolute dweeb. So it was like, maybe if I do something to change it, I feel a lot better about myself. Uh, It's just, people, they don't explain the time it takes. So when you go into it first, you think it's all going to change. 
So I stepped back away from it at the while, after a while because I wasn't making any changes. I wasn't seeing any differences. But what people don't take away from it is the fact that you, you need to be patient with it. The confidence, the strength, the tone, muscle, the size. It all comes with confidence and then to persist with what you're doing. Mm. And do you feel like there was there was kind of something that sparked the urge obviously you said about the body image and that's like a, an on, that's quite a long ongoing thing because i can relate to that as well you know having skinny legs and not being happy with my body composition but do you feel like there was a moment there was like a spark there was like a oh shit moment like i need to go and, yeah 100 percent. uh yeah. that was basically living with like this massive sorrow on my shoulders it was a good distraction at the time but then the distraction becomes a reason to get better. Obviously, dealing with the issues I have, it's it's a struggle. So when you find something that's positive, your mind follows it. It's just like a fresh new light, isn't it? And yeah. you just feel like completely amazed by it and just fresh again and you know that's I, I can relate exactly the same kind of thing the first time you step with your foot in the gym and it doesn't matter what you're doing you're releasing those hormones in your body and there's those feel-good hormones you know it's that serotonin it's the dopamine it's the all the really really good hormones and it's it is kind of like i want to i want to keep doing this i want to feel like it can be overwhelming because you don't know what it is yeah i think that's what a lot of people don't understand as well yeah, I didn't understand it myself. Mm. That's why I had to keep stopping and starting because I didn't understand why I felt so good in the gym. But then when I come out, I'm like, oh, mm, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And you're you, obviously just recently you've been trying. I've seen you know obviously we're very 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 good mates. I've been seeing a lot of your training lately and seeing how much strength you have gained in the past three, probably f- actually four to six months. It's just been absolutely incredible. You've been hitting new PBs. You know what? What do you, what's your kind of approach on that in regards to your strength training and and just you know hitting these PBs week in week out? You give yourself a focus. Like if you know you want to hit something, you build yourself up to that. If you know that you can do more, it doesn't mean it's going to happen straight away. But if you keep working and working and working, grinding, 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 it's going to happen. And uh, now it's a good focus to have. You want to be stronger. You're going to focus on getting stronger. So you're going to keep pushing for these numbers and it's going to come. You just got to be patient. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's setting the bar, setting a standard high for yourself because anybody... Oh yeah, 100%. If you, if you don't set yourself a bar, you know, what, you, what are you aiming for? Yeah. Anybody can go in, in and train in the gym and just do the same thing week in, week out and not push for that little bit more. And I think you have to know what you've done before on your biggest movements, especially, you know, what did I do last week? How many reps did I do in it? How good were the reps? And I think you're very, very conscious of that more than anything. And um, I mean, what, because obviously you've been training quite consistently now for quite a long time. What do you feel like is... What do you feel like the gym has, has, has kind of teached you? It like kind of what's the main thing that you've you've took away from from being in the gym often? You know, you technically an athlete now. The, it's okay to be you. Mm. It's okay to grow as you, because the the biggest thing I learned about the gym is something I tell everybody every day. If they, if I get asked about the gym and they're unsure, it's like what well, you got to understand is every single person in that gym walked in in the same shoes that you're in. Yeah, absolutely. Every single yeah. person at gym was unhappy or they wanted to be better. So if you want to be better, tell yourself you want to be better because then you're going to go to be better. Mm. If you if you don't want to be better, then it's not for you. Yeah. Then find something that you want to excel in. But if you want to be healthy, strong, you want to look good naked, go to the gym. Yeah. and aspire to be the person that you keep telling yourself you want to be yeah definitely i mean it's that mentality it's the mentality of it's all comes in the head first it all comes with your thinking patterns and you can take what what i've took away from the gym is the biggest thing is like you said going in and improving myself and trying to be the best version of myself but then not just saying oh i don't need to just do this in the gym i can take this mindset and this behavior and put it in all the other areas oh, yeah, of my 100%. life I, I don't think i've ever felt more positive about my future than i have purely because i've changed my mindset through going in with a hard working attitude and that has now 
branched off to my job it branched yeah. off to my lifestyle yeah yeah you know making changes for the better because you need to be that strong person that you are in the gym yeah because there's no point it's not a facade it's not a bravado mm. you go in there you are literally you yeah you don't go in there as someone else there's no cheating you're it's there you. Yeah. You go in and into the gym with a half assed attitude, you're gonna put in half assed effort and you're gonna walk out of there more pissed off than you did when you walked in. Yeah. Yeah. So when you walk in there, you walk in there with your head held high, you hit your ambitions, you put the work in and you'll walk out, you'll feel hundred percent better. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean like I said, it's clearly leaked out in other areas of your life. And if somebody comes to me and they say, look, I'm, you know, I'm in this bad way. I need to start improving my life. One of the first things I'll ask them is, do you do any physical exercise? Not even necessarily the gym. I'll say, do you do any physical movement that tests you on a, not even a daily basis, on a weekly basis, so that you're doing something to test yourself. You're doing something to higher your standards. That could be a run. That could just be some gentle stretching at home just to, push yourself and test yourself and we you cannot become a better person physically and mentally if you're not testing yourself and yeah, it's just that people become too complacent with the lifestyle comfort zones yeah. comfort yeah, zones they, i find why, yeah. why should i push myself because i'm happy where i am like are you and i think or are the, you just comfortable yeah exactly and i think the more people the more you get used to stepping outside of your comfort zone. So when you've got, when you're squatting three plates on your back, you're way out of your comfort zone. And part oh, it's of, not nice. <laughs> it, I, yeah. When the whole world feels like it's going to fall out your back end. Yeah. That's not nice. But when you get that back up. Whew. And that they say, they say, especially about the movement, the squats that, you know, there's something heavy trying to push you down. And are you going to stand back up again? And I love that oh, kind of metaphor. metaphor. Yeah. yeah. Because, you can take that same thing and you can say, right, today I stood back up when there was a heavy weight trying to push me back down. That shows that I can stand back up in other areas of my life, like my job, my relationship, my career, anything else. So it gives you that strength. It, it flicks that switch. And I think that's why people get so um, kind of healthily addicted to training in the gym because it's like if you don't test yourself often, you feel like your standards are not increasing. What you said about the movement when you've got a weight pushing you down, you're not just focusing about lifting the weight, you're focusing on how mm. you're lifting the weight. And that's going to stretch out eventually. You're going to be like, how am I going to beat this? How am I going to fix this? How am I going to rebuild this? How am I going to do this? It's not just about doing it, it's how you're going to do it. Are you going to do it right so it's not coming back down? Mm. Yeah. And that's is it. If you don't lift the weight properly, you're going to hurt yourself. Mm. Absolutely. I have. Yeah. Twice. Yeah stupid mistakes when i'm not thinking about what i'm doing but then that's more lessons that you've taken away from the gym as well and there's so many just there's an unlimited amount of lessons that you can take away from being in a gym and people are probably going to listen to this and think oh craig is just trying to get oh, people in the gym, gym. Bros. yeah yeah but it, yeah. no it's it's true it is true and it doesn't matter if you're there to to build muscle it doesn't matter if you're there to lose fat it doesn't matter like I went through a training phase just recently where I wasn't even thinking about trying to build muscle. I wasn't even trying to think about losing weight or my weight management or anything. I was just going in and it's just a happy place. the psychology. I was like, I just it's want to, I want com, that, that mental place. clarity. Yeah. yeah, I want that mental clarity so I can keep myself nice and sharp. Yeah, it's, a, it's a comfortable place where you're not just sat on your fucking ass, watching TV, eating rubbish, mm. moaning about everything. Because mm. that's the biggest problem. People moan too much about themselves change it then yeah do something, do about, something it. about it take some action nobody's gonna I don't do that mind for listening you to people when they've got troubles but if you're gonna start moaning about me about your life then just sort it out stop preaching about how good something is but then when you go home you're moaning about it go go do something that's gonna make you a better person because mm. you're clearly not who you want to be yeah it's all it's all the problem solving approach you're saying i have a problem how am i going to solve it and it's take the, a step back yeah and I, you'll see it absolutely and i think one of the best things you can do for yourself is actually be honest with yourself and sit down and say right what do i need to improve about myself and none of us are perfect there's always going to be some flaws about us there's always going to be a form of improvement and development that we can keep bringing on ourselves but the question is is how are you going to do it? I mean, the most you could look at the most successful people in the world, you know, these big athletes, these most successful businessmen, and you think, yeah, they're perfect, but they're not. I guarantee those people are still waking up every morning and they're asking themselves, what can I do today that is going to make me a better person than yesterday? And that is, again, that's 
the phase of life that is that is what we're all here to do and i i'm reading a lot re- recently actually about um <laughs> stories of people on their deathbed and it's shocking Jeez. to hear about some of the things that you read and the regrets and they always say i wished i would have tried to enjoy my life and be a better person and be at my peak state and the the, the percentages i can't remember exactly That'll what it take was you to a low place to realize that some people don't even make it to the age that you're going to make it to yeah you know what i mean people, some people are going to die before they hit 50 yeah and then people could have been so much better so why the hell are you sat down wasting your days being a miserable piece of shit Mm. You know what I mean? I think as well, it's not even just about the the number of an age, like oh, like how long are you going to live for? I try to look at it as if as the long, longevity, like what is your life like? I would, you know, I would rather <laughs> I'd rather die younger and live a really great yeah. quality life than to than to live older and not have such a good quality if life. For a good time, not a long time. Exactly. I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, um so tell me about the Viking couture. Couture. We were trying to figure out how to say this earlier, wasn't we? <laughs> Viking couture. Couture. Yeah. I know how to say it because I'm a, an ambassador. Uh, hey, so tell me, tell me about about that. What what is it? Um, obviously, you're a part of it. You're one of the key ambassadors for it, them. It's easy for people to look at it as a brand. Granted, we are a clothing label, but on my phone every morning, it's messages pushing people on what we're doing today how we're getting it done obviously there's some banter along the way it's hilarious but i can go a day without looking and there'll be 200 plus messages and all these messages will be pushing people on that's awesome if you feel low we'll pick you up it's it's, it's a family lifestyle it's a brotherhood essentially is what we call it so it's a community yeah we're pushing each other on it's there's a load of good people in there don't get me wrong we've had the bad as such but they always find their way out of it they, you mm. know they, they you always find a weasel they realize it's not for them yeah and or, they, yeah. or no or they're just an asshat basically <laughs> okay. like i'm not being horrible but they're not it's just not for they're them they're putting people down yeah you know that's not what we're about we're about lifting people up we're so it's a, a very lot, positive force yeah, a lot, of the, lot like. of the things i've done are because of the people around me not just the vc you yourself mm. you've pushed me more in, in more ways than i ever thought i could have done when we were training mm. it's um it's just good to have it's that positive energy like-minded that people bringing in yeah. like-minded people will feel the same things they will do the same things they will push you to be better at the things that you enjoy because those things that you enjoy put you in their presence so how how did you come about the vc um or did, did they contact you or did you see them on, i reached on- out Okay. So, did you see them on social media? Social media. Okay. I reached out. They were looking for people who wanted to join. Okay. And be a part of the the group. And I was like, you know, you know what? I'm not going to lose anything. Mm. I'm in. Yeah. Sign me up. I did, and it has probably been one of the most positive decisions I've ever made in my life. So these guys, they obviously do clothing but obviously i see they have a lot of these meets together where you guys get together and you kind of approach it you, i know you go to different gyms as well so you bounce around different gyms yeah. which is really cool so you're taking that community and you're going and seeing all of these new environments with it as well you've all got your, your, your clothing on together you all know you're part of the same team walking in like an it's army powerful. yeah walking but in like an army like thing, we're like, here a lot it's of time people to go. think uh, well i believe a lot of people think that oh god that might be intimidating what you got to understand is we don't go to these big chain train uh, 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 chain dri- oh man um, ah, imagine yeah. if i could get my words out <laughs> <laughs> big chain gyms yeah we go to these individuals who have opened gyms for a reason to help others we go there we support we promote we pay our entry we never ask for free entry a lot of our members that we have now have come from our meets of people who have seen what we're doing and they want in because it's positive. Mm. You see a group of people coming into a gym and having the best time. They don't. We don't care what people think about us. We're there to have a good time, lift some weights, have a laugh, enjoy the time with her. Yeah. And then you just people just soak it up. I want in on that. That's positive. That's going to teach me how to be better. Yeah. And it will. It's contagious. That kind of energy, and the, you know, the, you've, the you've clearly insane. been pulled in from it. You've seen a positive impact it has, and it's one of those where when you grow something like that, the more it grows, the more energy that is given out. And yes, you're going to get some people that might see it as an intimidating front look on the front look. Well, but- that's the thing. That's why people look at like the whole Viking attitude 
They're like, oh, God, that's a bit much. Mm. Oh, that's a bit violent. It's like, well, if you strip it down to brass tacks, it's it's a no-excuse mentality. Yeah. There's no there's, there's no difference between them and you in regards to no. how any way that you look or whatever, but it's it's the it's, mentality. It's, it's the down message. to you to make yourself better. I think it's there's fantastic. There's no excuse. I think it's absolutely fantastic what they're doing. And, you know, if any of the guys, uh, any of the guys do, who, who is the, it's a couple, isn't it? Yeah, um, uh, Dave and Kerry Leber. Dave and Kerry, yeah. So if those guys are listening, you know, it's absolutely fantastic what they're doing. And to be able to say, right, let's try and build a community and try and bring this pos- positivity into people because, you know, there could be people out there that really need this right now. They really need it. Well, this is, this is the thing, like... It, it boils down to practice what you preach as well, in my opinion. The, there's loads of gym brands out there and these people haven't even ever set foot in a gym or they've never wanted to push it any further to compete in. So these people aren't... They're just feeding off a phase that was and it's just grown and grown and grown. Mm. Whereas in the VC, we have professional bodybuilders. Mm. We have professional powerlifters. Yeah. We have people who if that is what you want to do in life, if that's something you aspire to be, you've got the best foot forward because these people will show you everything. It is a fountain of wealth. What I love about it more wealth, than anything. knowledge. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> words again. What what I love most about the, v, the, the VC is that, you know, what they're saying is that, yes, I'm a professional bodybuilder or yes, I'm a professional powerlifter. I can do this, but you can too. And it's, Bringing, it's oh, changing people's belief system, which is one of the one, one of the greatest things because our belief systems will stop us in so many ways. Oh, he can pull that way. Oh, I'm never going to be able to do that. Actually, no. Yes, you can. It is doable. Nothing is impossible. And I always talk about your potential. Your potential will all... The, how much potential you put in something is determined by what your belief systems are. If you have a 100% belief system that you can do something, your potential will be at its absolute maximum. When your potential is at its absolute maximum, you will naturally take maximum action. When you take maximum action, what will then happen is you'll get maximum results. And it's kind of like a cycle. So you've got potential. Look at the world around you. You're raised to believe you're not good enough. Exactly. Yeah. There's always going to be this those. This world will keep on treading on you because you aren't good enough. So your belief system has gone before you know it. Yeah. But you can put it back. Yeah. You just got to turn around and say, nah, you know what? I, lo- I love what you said. Uh, I love the fact that you, the first thing you said was about the community. And that was the key thing. Because if anybody was to look at the VC, they'd think, oh, it's just a, it's a lifting team or it's, it's, it's a bodybuilding team or a gym team. But- oh, it's a group of people who like to swan around in vests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pull lots of weights. Each nipples. And, <laughs> you know, grow beards. Touch each other. Yep. No, I'm not growing a beard. I can't grow one. I look really ill when That's I That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, the VC. I've all got beards. Oh, there's no chance oh, for no. me. Huh. No chance. This is the best it gets for me. We, ha- we have uh, women in the group, and I can assure you they don't have beards. <laughs> <laughs> That's very. Uh, that makes me very comfortable now. I'm yeah. like, yes, great. So I'm okay with shaving. <laughs> but let, I think it all comes down to the peer groups. And like you said, it's not just about the community that you're in at the minute. It's every single person in your life. They call it your peer groups. So you will become the people that you surround yourself with. And I can relate to this. I'm sure you can relate to this where if you surround yourself with bad people, if you surround yourself with people who don't want to grow and don't want to become a little bit better and don't have really big ambitions and want to just go out and give it everything they've got. If you don't surround yourself with people like that, guess what? You're not going to do it either. This is what I thought about the other day. Because when we used to hang around the local town, go to the shops and that when we were kids. Yeah. Right? There are still people today that are still stuck in that loop, coming up to 30 years old, where they're hanging around with the same people, yeah. doing the same drugs they used to, in the same little shithole flats that they grew up in. I'm not being funny, but they'll complain till the rest of their days that because they're not, they're not happy. Yeah. They're not developing life. Life isn't good to them. Why can't I get this? Why can't... Well, I'm not being funny, but you're hanging around the wrong sort. I think that there has to be a time and a place where you have to say to yourself, I need to cut ties with these kind of people. And it happens to me. It has happened to me it's a lot. It's not just necessarily bad people. No, it's just if that... You, if something's not compatible, it's better to just say, that's it. Yeah. Because I'm not growing as a person anymore. Yeah. 
And one thing I really, really, really try and look out for now is I'll pay attention to who is in my peer group right now. What kind of impact are they having on me? And it's great because you've got, you call them the support system, don't you? So it's your support systems, it's your peer groups, it's your communities. And it's great because you can take some, a little bit of something different from each area. So let's say, for example, I have my own mentor and my own coach. He gives me a kind of a lot of business coaching. He gives me a lot of psychology coaching, a lot of keeping that mindset nice and high. Whereas I see someone like my dad and my dad really kind of makes sure I'm okay in myself, make sure because he knows me like a book and he'll give me this is the that thing. proper you're, loving assurance yeah, as yeah. well. Like, you'll right, you'll get you, this son. given to you, but then you'll bleed it down to someone else. All your life, you're told that shit rolls downhill. Ah, uh, yeah. So what about knowledge? Yeah. What about yeah. compassion? Yeah. But you're always told that it's the bad that rolls downhill. Yeah. Your manager having a go at you. So then you'll have a go at someone who's lower than you. It's like, there's more than just the bad. Think about knowledge, compassion, love. Why not pass that on instead of just moaning all the time? Mm. Being negative. Just because someone's moaned at you, like, yeah, that is one aspect of life. I get it. But no one ever tells you that knowledge rolls downhill. Yeah. yeah. Teach. Be humble about it. Yeah. Stop moaning about it. Tell people what you know so then they can be better. So then it will support you in the long run. Yeah. Or it doesn't have to support you. Be selfless. Teach them so they can help themselves. It's easy. It's, it's, it's the it's same thing. Contagious. It's 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 you know what what I said this on the last podcast, but it's the, infuriating the, that people don't do it. Yeah, the energy that I said this before, the energy that you have in yourself and you give out to other people, you will naturally get that back. You will get that back if you're putting out bad energy. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to get some really fucking shitty energy back. There was something someone said to me not long back, and I, I I've literally it's paved my way now for a long time and it's positive vibes positive strides if you're not gonna make I like good that. vibes you're not moving forward I like you're gonna that. take steps backwards I like it's true. that yeah it is true you're coming out with some really good hotlines I am you're gonna get people inboxing fountain <laughs> of metaphors <laughs> These power lines power phrases that I call them yeah Pe here's another one for you people spend their life asking for a lighter load not a stronger back wow and that's true. Let me get my pen. I need to write this down. This is great. But it's true. <laughs> no. Oh, please. Oh, I wish this one's hard. Suck it up, buttercup, <laughs> man. Stand back up. Carry the load. Make it lighter as you go. And it's so powerful using certain words and certain vocabulary about i you know you can if you look up there you can see i've got some stuck up there yeah. I, i've got these power phrases and i see them every day and it's like it's something trying to kill it's some, some, something trying to shake you kill 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 it's that yeah. i'm not going to let anything throw me down and life is a game thrive in it and fucking win it yeah. and it's that positive positive energy that you're taking in and like I said, people. I think yeah. if anybody, you look at the media, you're taking in negativity. So why not put something positive in front of yourself and feed off that instead? And just changing some of the words that you tell yourself, because I, I'm I'm guilty of this, and I'm sure you know we all are. I'm sure you are. Whereas sometimes we can give ourselves a little bit of negative self talk. We're human, you know. It happens, but, you, but it's just a bit of negativity goes a long way as well. It's what you do with it. It's, it's what you how, do. It's how, how you respond to, fuel to yourself it. rather than to put yourself down. Absolutely. Put it in the tank. Don't put it in the way. Absolutely. That's another one That's for another you. One. Get me off. Jeez. There you I'll, go. I'll be listening to but this back. Like you've like, got yeah, post-it yeah. notes on your mirror. And how many times have I wanted to walk past there and leave a letter saying, you're a knob? Just so you walk out your bedroom and say, oh, great. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Well, I might do it. <laughs> but it's true. Post-it notes. Put a note out for yourself. If you're in a positive mood on the night before, make you tomorrow positive. Yeah, and just having little power messages stuck up, mm. um, ghosts, even if you don't actually like read them, but they're just past your line of sight, your brain actually still perceives them and still actually processes them. So it's kind of well, sitting you know you in put there, it there for the day. You know you put it there, you and know it what just, it says. It just, it's just there so that it might just go boom at some point. And it's they're so, so powerful, these power notes. And if anybody's listening to this and they want to take the one thing away from this podcast is think of a power phrase that you can write down and it doesn't have to be this it's yours it doesn't have to, it doesn't matter what words you choose as long as you read it and you, it makes you go fuck yeah like yeah. yeah this and it makes you just it gives you that, that pumped feeling it gives you that energy and you sometimes can, you need to reassure yourself that you can yeah and then at the same time you actually remind yourself hang on a minute i wrote that yeah. that's my words that's me i have got this in me i'm doing it this is Keep this was it. in me the whole Keep time going. all i gotta do is just flip that coin and just snap myself out of it yeah wow so um 
like I said, we, we've known each other a very long time and we met through our earlier 20s and it was through the music scene. Um, and we were both very musically active and obviously... Oh, I don't know about active all i did was shout into microphone I've never well, we, we, we were doing something anyway and uh, yeah. be, it's more being in in a band i've learned a lot from being in a band and having that you know that community that around family you, lifestyle your, that family lifestyle and um i mean what's wh- there's a lot of good things about being in a band a lot of bad things about being in a band and i really really took away from it is the creativity and the being able to express myself on a stage with an instrument it's a form of art it really is whether it's a microphone or if it's a oh, drums you're, you're creating something with your not only your mind but your body is it's it, people just say oh he's making music well no that he sat there for hours concentrating on something positive creative yeah rather than just sitting there doing nothing yeah Again. So you can take it as you will you can go oh it's just music you it's it might be art. to you it's an because art. you sit there going oh, i'm just gonna sit and watch tv or oh, I'm, I'm, i could do this but you know what mm, no nah, you know what? i'm not gonna do it. no he sat there for hours with a guitar or a, his drums or a bass or a notepad and pen and gone i'm gonna pour my soul into this because this is something that's good for me yeah that's what music was yeah it was a, it was an escape from the normal monotonous boring routine that we had in life it is it now that I'm a little bit older and obviously not, we're both not very active musically now. We don't really do anything, but I actually cherish those moments now in my earlier 20s more than ever. I look back on them and I'm saying, wow, that was really good. And I'll listen back to the music that we made together in our bands and it'll be just be like, wow, like we created this. Like we made this and there was not, there was nothing than a better feeling than actually do, like creating something in your room or wherever say you're sitting down you're writing lyrics i'm sitting down i'm writing a guitar part yep. and then turning it into a piece of music but then actually performing it in front of somebody so you're showing this to an audience that was just a, an absolutely incredible thing and the one key thing i've taken away from my music days is that it is so 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 important to be creative in some something some kind of interest no matter what it is if you're writing if you're you know if you're creating art if you're still making music you know dancing performing anything anything that's a performance kind of thing is really really important and i do miss it <laughs> do you yeah well i always miss it i feel like i'm too old for it yeah well, yeah it's, never it's too good. old but this is the thing this is what you can you say like dancing m- music anything Media, making videos, pouring your time into something that's creative where it's not you just dwelling on something that's sad. This is the same as going to the gym. Exactly. You, these exactly people are going the to the gym and they want to go, oh, I might do a bodybuilding competition. They'll research it, they'll look at it, and I'll guarantee you they tell themselves that they can't do it. Yeah. And you know what they'll do? They'll, they'll do it. Yeah. yeah. They'll put the time in. Yeah. They'll put the effort in. They'll struggle, but they'll get over it. Yeah. It's, it's what people do and if you just need to see it in yourself and i think with music for me i'm I'm trying to think about the times when i was struggling in the gym and then times that i was struggling trying to write a guitar part at home you get and it's there. like you get the right they call it the writer's block don't they but you yeah. get there in the end you persevere and you say i am going to do this i am going it goes to back do to this. stepping back it's patience and it's step discipline. back and look at what you're doing yeah look absolutely. at where you are look what you're doing look what you're writing yeah i mean the it w- comes Going back to obviously when we were in bands, that kind of environment, the music scene, the surroundings that we had, I really, really felt very pressurized in them. A lot to do because in the music we played, especially, which was rock and metal, there's a lot of alcohol surrounding us. There's a lot of drugs around us, a lot of that party lifestyle. And, you know, I look back on that now and I actually look back and say, wow, like, do you know what? I wasted a lot of my time. Yeah, I was so unhealthy. And as much as I loved the music scene, that was a very negative thing for me at the time. And um, I mean, what what was your kind of intake in regards to the surroundings, the the bad surroundings? you go to a practice room and there's just chocolate bars and microwave burgers (laughs) and that. Yeah. And I, I wonder why I've got a spotty back now. Yeah. But yeah, it's like... You do. You go in. You go to the shop, and instead of picking up a water or something, it's going to be. Good. I'm going to have a, a pack of beers and that, and then I'm going to go down to the practice room. I'm going to go get a pizza because it's easy. Yeah. Because you feel like your time's occupied too much by what you're doing. Yeah. So then you literally fall into this little routine of, oh, I need to make it easier 
I'm just going to go out with my mates and get really drunk because that's what's expected of me. Mm. I'm going to go to the pub after my practice on the, on the show and we're going to get absolutely shit faced because that's what rock stars that's do. That's what the rockers do. Yeah. So that's what that's the big, what... that's what the big, and yeah. quite frankly, that's the biggest pile of bullshit I've ever met, seen it heard in my life. Yeah. Because the people who are actually doing it for a living, they play a show and they go to bed. Yeah. So this yeah. lifestyle, this peer pressure of going out, getting drunk, throwing shots down your neck, smoking drugs, doing drugs, whatever you want to do, it's um, it's 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 an escape. Yeah, it's yeah. an escape for, for people that think they need to be this person. It's it's like you said, it's that party lifestyle. And one thing that I really struggled with was the like I was very easily uh, persuaded. Like, yeah. be like, oh, go on, Craig, have a drink, and then before hey, you know, Craig, it, gin. Y- yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I remember that, that was night. Me. Yeah. So we. <laughs> Do you want a gin, Craig? No. Here's a yeah. gin, Craig. So we played that gig. It was a great gig. Everyone was having a good time. We had a few beers. I was we actually had a few really drinks. drunk on stage as well. That yeah. was really bad. Yeah. That was that was a low point. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it was those surroundings. It's what you do. I'll never regret. I'll, I'll just look back and go, could you done it a bit differently, mate? Cause yeah. Would you still be doing it? Mm, you know? Yeah. I think the key thing I've learned away from all of that is that when you're having a good time, you still have to control yourself, and what that was something making? that was something that I could I was very weak at. And as you know, as soon as you said to me that shot of gin in Birmingham, you like, knew what it was going to do to you, mate. You knew what it was going to. It was. It was. There was no it. doubt. I was like, "Give it me now," and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then next thing you know, I hate my life. I'm like, yeah. "Oh my fucking god!" I can't drink. That's going to make me throw We're up. Passed yeah, out drink in the taxi. It? Okay, <laughs> and I think you know it's really, really, really important to to find that line between having a good time but then not ruining it and I was the, yeah. I used to be the master of this anyone that used to know me when I was in this, my, this, I was the master at ruining my own good night yeah the master <laughs> of it and that was I think I'm I, I'm actually do not I, give this man red wine yeah I'm actually very <laughs> a little bit okay I'm actually very <laughs> grateful that I've learned that lesson where I yeah. am now though because now I've taken that big lesson and I'm a much wiser when I'm going out now. If I'm having a beer, or if I'm having a glass of wine, I'm I'm much more conscious about. That's it. That's where I've found a, a new discipline for myself because I'm not saying I had a drinking problem. Mm. I never needed a drink, mm. but when I went out for a drink, I didn't know when to stop. Yeah, and I'd end up passed out, blacked out, yeah, throwing up, ill, bank empty, yeah, for no reason because I get too. So, like I get too excited you and I start buying drinks you, yeah. just, you just don't realise what you're doing to yourself you're there you wake the moment, up the next just, day yeah. and you're like why yeah so that's why this discipline of me I'm I'm doing a full year sober just to show myself that I don't need this thing will it carry on yeah it might do will I have a beer in a year I might do so how long has it been now that you've not had a drink um, Christmas day Wow, 2019 it was that's, the last last drink I had. That's great. And how how does it feel? Do you feel quite challenged at times? Nope. Do you feel so? There's no temptations mm-hmm. there. Me and you've gone out. You've had a beer, and you yeah. said you want one. I said no, I'll have a coffee. Yeah, there's just. I'll no, go. I'll have a water. Coke, yeah. Coke Zero. Coke Zero. No yeah. sugar, kids. So what what do you think is the main thing that has that has led you to make that decision? Was it just you just want to kind of test yourself so that you can say, yeah, do you know what? I am in control of these oh, yeah. temptations that there, are around me. Obviously. There are health benefits and negatives of alcohol. You can have alcohol in a healthy diet. Of course you Everybody can. Everybody knows you can. Absolutely. So don't think that you have to go healthy and like, oh, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to do this. Have a good time. Let you, let your hair down. I've done that too much. Mm. So mm. it was a case of, I'm just going to do it for myself. Show myself I can do it mentally and my body will... Be- will it benefit? Might do. Might not. You know, mm. it's been used to it for that long. Mm. It might be like, what what's going on? But it, it was more of a mental thing. Like, I would go to the pub with a few mates and I'd say, I'm not going to drink much. Give me an hour. I'm absolutely shit-faced <laughs> yeah. on the floor like, because I've gone, yeah, I'll have that, I'll have that, I'll have that. Yeah, so there's no control over it. it. I've tried it's, it before. Yeah. I've tried it multiple times before to say, you know what, I'm not going to have a drink. Within an hour, I've had a couple of Cokes and then I'm like, you know what, I'll have a pint now instead of a, like a, a nice, refreshing, cold glass of Coke. I'll have a, I'll have a pint of lager. Mm. And then that becomes one mm. and two. And then you go to shorts, and then before you know it, you, you're back in that spiral. It's it's that it's that kind of. If it's one, unhealthy for you, control it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not the alcohol that was unhealthy for me; it was me. I like to call it controlled consumption. So, um, it's having a 
you can you can't you can have a beer you can have this you can have a bit of anything you want it's just like coffee you can have a little you know you can yeah. have if you have too much coffee then it's going to have yeah. a negative effect on you it's the thing working in a pub i used to sit all the time on the dot six o'clock a bloke could walk in every day mm. four pints then you go home for his dinner every day every single day okay and you just at the time you don't see it but now i can see it like i don't want to be that person mm. You don't see it then because it's your job. Mm. You want them to stay there mm. because you want them to fund your wages. You know this and So you don't see it like that. That's not why you want them to stay there, but it's the back of your head. Mm. They put money in the till. It's money in your pocket. Yeah. But then, looking at it now, as I've tried to change my lifestyle completely, which I've flipped my life on its on its head. You have. You've done so fantastic. It's like, You've done really well. Oh, thank you. You've done fantastic. Anyway, yeah, it's great. It's like. You do not want to be that person. You do not want to be that person who literally goes to work every day just to go for Groundhog four points. Day. <laughs> yeah, it's Groundhog Day. Yeah. I, I could. Mm, that's one thing that worries me. Falling into this whole monotonous cycle of just doing the same thing every single day. And people are like, "Steve, but yeah, you go to the gym every day." Do I? No, no not every day. No, but you're still doing something different. Not boring at the gym as well. Yeah, Gosh. and I think. I mean, I just recently, I actually fallen, I found myself falling back into that Grand Dog Day thing a little yeah. bit. And I, I I identified it straight away. But five, five, six, seven years ago, I would have never identified it. I just would have been going through yeah, the motions. But through, I actually realized it went about three or four days. And I was like, right, hang on. I'm just relying on these things now to get me through the day. And it's the same as yesterday. All of a sudden, I started feeling really low. I felt like there was no meaning. There was no purpose. And I really had to have a word with myself. But I, I snapped out of it just like that. And I think it's the awareness. Everything yeah. that we've been talking about so far is how aware of you of your life and the choices that you're making in your day-to-day life. And yeah, if, if you're happy and you're good and you feel content about your life, that's cool. That's fantastic. But if you're sitting down on the night and you're just feeling like there's no purpose there, you feel like there's no, you don't know why you're here. I like to say like, we're all put here for a reason. We've all, there, there is a reason why we were put on this planet and we're all supposed to give something out to the world. It doesn't matter what it is, but we're supposed to give something to the world. You're not and, testing yourself. You know, the, 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 That's the, the That's... position I'm in right now, um, going from my old career into the career I'm in now, has really made me realize, wow, that old career I had working in retail, in, in restaurants and coffee shops, that was, not, that was not why I was put here. I was put here to do what I'm doing now, which is obviously helping people get fitter and healthier and be the best version of themselves. So it's a real eye opener. And I I think, you know, if anybody can take something away from this, it's just ask yourself, just, just ask yourself just a simple question. It just goes back to complacency. If you're, if you're not happy, put an obstacle in the way because that obstacle probably lead to something that will make you happy. Mm. Overcome it. Like you, you, you work in the, what, wasn't nine till five but it felt like a nine till five at, at the coffee shop it mm. was like i'm not happy mm. so you took yourself to the gym it's, so a, you it's a survival yourself. mode it's yeah. a survival mode i'm just yeah. here to survive yeah. but not thrive it's television people just get stuck in the same thing then you took yourself to the gym then you realized i enjoy this i enjoy mm. the good feeling then mm. you then it was like can i help other people yeah get into this position yeah me myself i a lot of people ask me, are you a PT? Can you train me? No. The answer is no, I can't. Mm. Why? Because I don't feel comfortable in myself to put your health in my hands. Yeah. It takes a very special kind of person to turn around and go, I'll help you. I know what I'm doing. I'm confident that I can help you because there's a lot of mugs out there that are telling you, I'm a PT. Mm. I can do this. I can do that. And I've seen it time in and time out. And I've wanted to go up and say, you're doing that wrong. But I'm not a I'm not like that. I, c- I can't. I can't confront people about it. But mm. I do want to call you out on your bullshit. But people don't understand that they, these people who want to help you, they're out there. You just got to find them. The right person. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've gone on a tangent. Then I, yeah, I, I completely this... forgot the question. <laughs> well, it wasn't even a question. I think I put it in. Go on. Uh, I think next. you know the, the key. The key. The key thing is really is just um, doing what's right for you and we're all different we're all what what might be right yeah, for one yeah. person is not right for you yeah. and there's no right or wrong answer it's just you being able to get home at the evening and say look yourself in the mirror and say do you know what yeah just just yeah, yeah. just feel feeling fulfilled with what find you've done something for you not don't find something for other people because you won't be happy yeah 
Absolutely. I think especially with social media, um, social media can be your best friend or it can be your worst nightmare. It can it can give you the the information you need. It can give you the inspiration that, that you need, the creativity that you need, but it can also... Show you a life that you want that you can't have because yeah. someone else is willing to get up and do the work. It, and it can also start to make you give yourself that negative talk that self-talk which is like oh i'm not good enough look at all th-. and this is There's the good and bad side coin. yeah there is absolutely There's you a- thinking bad i'm not saying it's easy to think good but there are good things there yeah flip the coin stop thinking negative it will come absolutely absolutely yeah it's 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 crazy isn't it like how our interests always change throughout life and i I've obviously been through the phase of music and then it was um, obviously getting into the fitness and the health and the gym. And there's always these like other things that come and go. Um, and it's, it's, it's crazy how just recently, the past kind of three to four months, I have been really, really, really interested in the football that's going on. And it's not just because... They're winning. <laughs> it's not just because it's of that. because they're winning. <laughs> well, if anybody's listening, Steve's an Aston Villa fan, which is completely fine. But... Uh, yeah is it fine <laughs> it winds you up doesn't it you tell me where are you guys in the table I'm done here I would, <laughs> this is where you get up next. and say next that's it I'm out of here but <laughs> <clears throat> basically nothing to do with any football clubs or anything like that I have just had this crazy interest and this crazy urge I'm really into the football right now and it's it's weird because I used to play football when I was a child. I used to be really into football at a young age. And then that door closed for a very long time and it's just opened up again. And I, it, it, I mean, do you find there's there's some any patterns in your life where there was something that has, the door has closed, but then it's it's opened up again and it's fresh? Or do you find there's something that has come along that is completely new and refreshing? That's like, wow, you know, like this is, this is really cool. And I'm really into this. It's a weird one. Um, I get... I couldn't really say it's left. It's always been there, but it's always been like, I'm a big gamer. Mm. I love computer. You know I do, right? Lately, not so much. So, like, it's it's it might not have happened before, like you said, like, the football, and I've enjoyed it all my life, but it's kind of phased out a little bit because I kind of, not lost interest, but forgot about it probably. Mm. I think I'm going through one of them phases now yeah. where, like, I've grown up playing computer games. All my life, I love them. Anybody calls me a nerd, <laughs> I don't care. But it's a case of, am I sitting there just to excuse myself from something else? So I've gone, you know what, no, I'm going to take a step back from it. I'm going to focus on my mental health, mm. my physical health, my work life, and my kids. Mm. That is what is literally, what is, you know, what is good for me. Yeah. And... I've got to tell you, like a lot of positive things are coming through in my life now. I feel so much better about myself because, not not because I've cut something out, but maybe it's okay to let things fizzle out. Yeah. Because then when it comes back, it'll come back as a passion and harder. Yeah. Like you say, like your football, you're so passionate about it now, and you were when you were a kid, but in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Know? There's a there's a time there's a time and a place for certain things in our lives, and I think it's important to ask yourself is. This is an interest, but is it actually inter- interesting me right now? And it's okay to close that door because... You don't have to waste time forcing yourself to like something because you think that's important. Yeah. You're allowed to drop things. You're allowed to forget things for a little bit. Yeah. If it's, it comes back, it's a passion. Yeah. If it doesn't, you're not wasting there's, there's, no, there's, there's, there's no, no love lost. There's nothing worse than trying to think that you're interested in something but you're not and you're just you, you're doing it anyway like you said with the game and it's it, like it's, it's, it's not a bad thing let it's just, something find you i've yeah. learned i like that right let recently, something find you yeah i've learned recently that more things have come to me when i stopped looking ah yeah, absolutely absolutely because when you're looking you're focused on one thing mm. yeah you know what i mean like right now in my life i've focused on one thing and i've ignored the world around me mm I'm fixing myself and in doing so but you feel good I feel yeah, I feel you, great you feel content yeah. you feel very fulfilled yeah that's all that matters but I'm, I've am i opened myself up now I'm like an open book yeah and I've just sucked in all this knowledge yeah and the right people are now surrounding me and I yeah. feel it, it makes you positive so stop walking the line stray the path a little bit yeah it's not it's scary but that's good yeah learn something new about yourself rather than just walk in the line that people expect i like that yeah i mean i i felt very guilty that 
the music had you know that that door had re- there was just no interest in music for me anymore i used to want to just get home and just write some stuff on my guitar on my laptop and i'd be pumped it's the same I- feelings when you're in the gym with your mates it's bro science i put it on the oh you had to it's, say that it's bro it is <laughs> though bro I mean, science I'm not being funny, but i'll go into a gym four times a week I'll go by myself. I'll be okay. It doesn't feel like a chore. I'll have someone punch me in the kidneys and say, lift that weight. I'll be like, I'm going to lift that weight. (laughs) No. You know what I mean? Like, I am Arnie. Like, I'm going to lift that weight. And then you you get pumped. Yeah. And same in a music room. Same with your friends when you're out. It's the same feeling. You get them good vibes and it makes you invincible. It's the hormones released again. It's it's getting that hormone release into your bloodstream. Those feel-good hormones hormones and it's how you get them are you going to get them in a good way are you going to go and you know take a load of drugs and take a load of alcohol and put do and you know eat 20 cheeseburgers and give yourself that reason to feel good or or are you going to choose the right thing and are you going to actually do something which is going to be great for you it's going to release those hormones something creative like you know um writing music or going and training at the gym or you know watching a football game in my opinion that's that's not unhealthy that's really good because it's it's interesting it's feeding me it's giving me something to focus on and you're being in that moment with that thing instead of sitting on the couch with 10 cheeseburgers you eat the cheeseburgers and then you sit there and you hate yourself and you feel like crap because you've got all these trans fats and all this blood and water going around all your digest it's just Ugh, your body tells ugh. your head a lot yeah and if you don't listen to it it's going to make you negative anyway absolutely, absolutely. and it, it's the same as people and the the life around you that you've built like i know people who have they've transformed themselves mm. they've looked mm. at themselves and gone i'm not happy anymore yeah i'm going to make these changes it hurts it's horrible yeah i'm going to go to the gym and change my body it hurts it's horrible it's not easy mm. consistency the, you know you're going in there you're you're putting your body through this grueling task of running when you feel horrible mm. you know putting yourself out of your comfort zone you can't doll yourself up and go into a gym because you're just going to look like an idiot mm. when it's running down your face you know mm. what I mean you go in there bare bones as you are to make yourself better yeah and it's I can't people don't give in, uh, people enough credit they're mm. quick to run you down than pick you up yeah not enough people in this world pick people up. All you're going to do is turn around and say, oh, why are you doing that? Or that's not good enough. Or, yeah, you look okay. No, you, you look great. Yeah. You're, you're strong. You're here. You're powerful. You, you, you're beautiful. You're putting the work in. You're putting the work in. You're putting in the life, work in. Not just the gym. This is like... A, that's the most, the that is the most attractive thing that I find in anybody. When I talk about attractiveness, I'm talking about someone's vibe, someone's like energy that yeah. they're giving out, someone that I get, you know, linked to is if somebody's working hard in anything that they do, whether it's in the gym and they're really giving it everything they've got, that's awesome, man. I don't care how they might look. I don't care how lean they might be. I don't care how, how much muscle they might have. I don't care. If they're working hard, that's fucking Am- cool. Man. Ambition that's is more attractive than muscle. Yeah, absolutely. But it's it's the same as what I was just saying. Not enough people pick people up. Not enough mm. people will tell you that you matter, that you're good enough. Mm. Mm. I, you know, I've been in that situation. Mm. And sometimes you have to tell yourself. You have to say, "Well, fuck it. If no one's going to tell me, I'm going to give myself this self talk." Exactly. Then with it, these power messages yeah. that we and mentioned that's what earlier, you do. and that's what you do. Yeah, but, but then. Th- it, it's a worry for me myself with how my head works. It's probably not been anywhere else, but you become quite lonely. But you're and, but you're starting to understand now again yeah. with your journey. Just like my joint journey, we go back to the peer groups, we go back to the support system, the communities that are around us. We have control of that. We can bring somebody into our life, and we can take we can kick somebody out of our life. There's no, it's nothing bad about it. But it's like, right, who are you going to choose? If now? you're on a journey to get better and be a better person, you've got to stop. De- developing like this need to keep people around that aren't good for you mm. yeah it's, it's not necessarily they're a bad person they're just not right for they're you. not right for you yeah. or they're not good to be in your life that's friends relationships mm. family yeah people don't understand family. that family will put you down more than your friends more mm. than your enemies you know mm. what i mean like mm. there are there are cases where people have literally been shut in by their family because they're told they're not good enough yeah yeah and these people won't they won't benefit from that Mm. They'll benefit from someone slapping on the back saying, you know, you are good enough. Go fucking get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes it just takes one person to say it and it's just like, boom. I mean, I like to think that I can help. If I can help one person believe that they are good enough. That's priceless. That's 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 the best That's thing more you can important do. to me than going out every day and earning how much money I can earn in a day. Yeah. Or 
going to oh, it's that positive fe- feeling you get good look, look you get you do yeah it's, it's it's a good feeling that you can make someone stand up and go you know what i th- I am important. I do matter. Yeah. These power notes where you're telling yourself that you can do it, do it. Do it. Yeah. Just do get it. off your ass and do it. Yeah. Fuck what people say to you that's going to put you down. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. The 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 worst the wor- like the worst ten words in in the dictionary is what will people say and what will people think. The moment that you start to think about that, I got two better ones. And you go out there and it's like boom. All of a sudden, you're think you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about someone else. You need to you need to kind of be selfish in a way and say, right, this is my life. It's no one else's life. I'm only here once. Yes, it doesn't mean that you don't care about the people around you, but at the end of the day, it's our bodies and our and our brains and our minds that we're in. No one else is. So why not? It's, it's not selfish. It's words. Looking after yourself. They're going to put you down. Go on then. The two Keep good words are going to put you up. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. You them. just had to completely ru- say again. Fuck them. Fuck them. Yeah. Fuck them. Fuck Anybody them. who's there to tell you otherwise, fuck walk them. away. Yeah. Fuck them. Walk yeah. away because they are going to keep doing it. They're not going to change. No matter what they do, they're mm. still going to run you down. If it's not physically, and it's not mentally, they're going to plant a seed in your head. They're going to try and get in there. It won't hit you straight away. Doubt and you it won't be... hit you straight away. Yeah. But it'll grow, it'll, it'll manifest, there. and one day you'll turn around and go, you know what, now I'm not good enough. Yeah, and then the doubts come in, and, and the negative doubts, self-talk negative. come in. Yeah, well, you and know. you this this positive self-talk that we give ourselves when you're saying, fuck them, and you know, let's, let's focus on ourselves. This is something that has to be practiced. It has to be practiced. You're not just going to be able to sit there and go, I'm going to kick some ass, and then you go out and you kick ass. You have to practice it. It's just like anything else. You have to do it a little bit every day. You've got to know what you're doing. You, to can't, create, you can't just hit the ground running. Yeah, you have to start to create that habit, that 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 root, that kind of signal in your head. And when we talk about brain neuroscience, these signals, there's a proven study showing that signals get stronger and weaker in your brain neuro associations. So just like anything else, you tell yourself every morning, I'm going to kick some ass today. I'm going to kick some ass today. I'm going to kick some ass today. Yeah, the first probably week, you probably won't feel anything happening. But after about a, a few weeks, you'll start to be like, actually, I kicked a bit yeah. of ass today. Actually, I kicked you know a little bit I more hate, ass today. I hate to keep going back to the gym. Go, no, it's your passion. Go for it. People, oh God, the gym again. Oh, he's talking about the gym. Oh, all bloody, oh, the whole pod- the all this podcast. Uh, it, it, it's just gym. <laughs> Do you want to talk about food? No, gym. <laughs> it's like, people ask me, it's like, how long have you been training? Like, consistently? Six months. Will, will I be that big after six months? I don't know. Will you? I don't know. Yeah, we don't I, know. Potentially, I could be bigger. Mm. If I knew what I was doing from the start, well, if I knew what I knew now, then, yeah, mm. would I change it? No, I've learned my ways by making mistakes. I didn't hit the ground running. Baby steps. I had the right people around me, yourself, mm. and some really big lads. Yeah, they're like to give you that inspiration. You the and yeah. then you meet the VC, and they're like they they push it, and that now I'm starting to see it. But this is six months, and I've started to see it. Mm. six months. I've started to get strong. Six months. I've started to see a difference. Yeah. It's not going to happen overnight. Mm, yeah. And You've got to put the time in. And one, one thing you said there that was really important is that, yes, you did make some mistakes in the past and you would not be where you are now if it wasn't... For, you, no. You, it was like you had to make those mistakes and every single person that is successful on this planet in whatever they're doing, whether it's their business, whether it's their health or anything you will always find that the people that are the most successful are the ones that have actually slipped the most times, but they've actually slipped and understood why they slipped okay. and what they can do to pick themselves back up and move forward so that if it happens again, they won't make the same mistake again and they just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. It's every hur- every hurdle's a learning curve. You're going to let you trip you up or you're going to get over it. Mm. You'll get you're kicked learn. down. Question is, are you going to get back up? Everybody can get kicked down and everybody does get kicked down. I get kicked down. But, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think I've been kicked down more than the average man, <laughs> but I'm here now. You're here, you're here, and you're you know you're kicking ass. Mm. So mm. cool. Well, um, just before we wrap things up, uh, where can people find you on social media? Um, you know, what's the, if anyone wants to get in touch with you and discuss anything, or wants them, you know, wants to just kind of. Uh, I really only use Instagram because I think Facebook is a piece of shit. <laughs> of people just spreading how great their lives are <laughs> while they're sat in the city picking their toenails 
I pick my toenails sometimes. I don't like the <laughs> idea of that. Uh, <laughs> but at Big St underscore VC, that's where you'll find me. Cool. And you've got you've got some new developments coming out soon, haven't you? Um, in the in the in the foreseeable future. YouTube. YouTube. So um, have we got any information on that yet, or is it still top secret? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess up Craig's colon. <laughs> God, you had to put something like that. In. Yeah. Ten oh. k. <laughs> calorie challenge we're gonna break him so bad mr healthy is going downhill yeah yeah and me i don't think i can yeah. do but you know I, I'm, I'm scared i'm very scared but that's gonna be the first video i'm gonna fast for like 48 hours before i do it <laughs> this is why you're not growing <laughs> be be the we're dirty getting, boy you're always we're get, born we're get, to we're be. getting up in another topic now yeah but. so um where can people find the viking couture on on uh, social media uk. Viking Couture on Instagram, Facebook. And that's spelled C O U T U R E. Yep. So it's Viking C O U T. All of your favorite social we'll put, media. We'll put the links in the descriptions anyway. So if anyone wants any links for anything, we'll put it all down below. Um, I am obviously Craig Gunn Coaching on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. It's all Craig Gunn Coaching. Um, if that's anyone wants to get in touch with me and have a chat about anything we've discussed today. Do it, do it, do it. Do it'll it. change me, yeah. so it'll change you. Um, I'm a stubborn. And, you know, anybody that's listening, um, obviously there's been a lot of stuff going on with um, some, obviously some in the news with some of the suicides going on. And I just want to say, if anyone is listening to this and they just want to reach out to anybody and just want to talk, then you know you can get in touch with me uh Steve, i'm sure will be all ears as I've well if anyone wants to discuss about anything you know that's that's what we do uh break the stigma talking is one of the most powerful things you can do it doesn't matter what you talk about it doesn't matter what you say just talk because it is powerful it's not you're not strong if you're holding in love it right thanks a lot man we'll wrap no it worries, up man. It's been peace. Emotional, man.